Nice watch. Thanks. What's the water resistance? 200 meters. And it's got a date display? Yes, it does. I might have gone for a metal strap instead of a leather strap. Really? Yes. I think I'd prefer a metal strap. I've had this one for years. It's as good as new. Why are Yorgos Lanthimos's characters like that? A little bored of it, actually. Why do they behave like... The last thing I want right now is a kiss from a silly little girl. That. <laughs> or like this. Spread your legs. It's like watching beings who've observed human behaviour trying their best to replicate it, but just falling short. But this type of characterization is seen far too often in the Greek filmmaker's work to be understood as just a gimmick. There's something deeper going on here. From his early Greek language films, like Dogtooth and Alps, to his more recent English language work, The Lobster, The Killing of a Sacred Deer, and The Favourite, Landamos' characters have been delighting and bewildering audiences for years. This is Robert. He stays in the room next to mine and has a lisp. Lanthimos and frequent writing partner F. Themis Philippou's idiosyncratic approach to character is part of the reason you know you're watching a Yorgos Lanthimos film. Okay, you do have more hair than I do, but not three times more. Surreal dialogue and deadpan delivery reveal characters who feel enticingly familiar. Mama, borrow a telephone. Yet, Paracalo. at the same time, utterly strange. Ευχαριστώ. But why are they like that? Now, the fact that you'll turn into an animal if you fail to fall in love with someone during your stay here is not something that should upset you or get you down. All of Lanthimos's characters seem predisposed to the absurd. A wolf and a penguin could never live together, nor could a camel and a hippopotamus. That would be absurd. Think about it. His worlds are filled with bizarre rules, but rules that everyone in those worlds accept. Now, have you thought of what animal you'd like to be if you end up alone? Yes, a lobster. Lanthimos rarely lays out these rules plainly at the start of each film. We often aren't aware of their origin. Instead, they're revealed through the way in which the characters engage with the world. And as the characters accept them unquestionably, so, as the audience, do we. What becomes apparent is that the characters' relationship to the rules is more important than the rules themselves. They accept their predicament blindly, and even when they try to find an escape, they do so within the rules prescribed for them. They never simply say, this is absurd. Instead, they try to find a way to succeed, whether that's by manipulating their own characterization as a way of fitting in. I think your nose is bleeding. Really? Oh, no. This happens to me all the time. Or by justifying their own disturbing choices. As if they aren't simply the lesser of the limited options available to them. I believe the most logical thing, no matter how harsh this may sound, is to kill a child. Because we can have another child. I still can and you can. And if you can't, we can try IVF, but I'm sure we can. What's even more telling about what Lanthimos is communicating to us is that when his characters do finally escape one system, they simply end up in another. By the way, any romantic or sexual relations between loners are not permitted, and any such acts are punished. Is that clear? Writers have been hiding deeper meaning beneath realistic and metaphorical dialogue for centuries. To some degree, we all speak that way every day. Whether it's to hide our true feelings, to spare someone else's, or simply for dramatic effect. What's the most you ever lost in a coin toss? Subtext infers a character's true motives oh, in a way that mimics real-world conversation. This builds up a sense of a character's wants and needs, pushing the narrative forward while letting the viewer empathise with whoever they're watching. But Lanthimos strips his characters of this mechanic. Do you actually believe another day will make a difference? Have you seen how ugly you are? Thus refusing to infer hidden personal motives, and instead revealing his characters to be pawns in a much larger world. A world over which they have no control. A world in which they have no impactful feelings to bury. And a world in which the rules define their actions, not their desires. Can we not do this today? It's awful. I know. 
but I'm afraid we have to do it. And so, if a character's personal desires are less important than their response to the rules of the world around them, subtext, too, becomes redundant. Revealing everything we need to know about the social dynamics of the world we're watching, without forcing us to decipher ambiguous language. That makes total sense. Lanthimos's unusual approach to dialogue also reveals a huge amount thematically. It's metaphorical. His characters are often disturbing to an audience. To jump from the window of room 180. Not because they have something to hide. There's blood and biscuits everywhere. But because they reveal everything they're thinking. I hope she dies right away. Even when the moment doesn't call for it. I can't hear you with all the screaming. His films typically tackle dark subject matter relying heavily on Greek tragedy and myth to create uncomfortable situations which satirically reflect our own world. Yes, it's exactly what you think. Just like you killed a member of my family, now you gotta kill a member of your family to balance things out, understand? His character's deadpan delivery of often bizarre dialogue is a way of disarming the audience. Bob will die, Kim will die, your wife will die. Putting us at a remove from the world of the film. We become voyeurs of something uncanny that might otherwise disgust us if it didn't amuse us. Don't worry, you won't get sick. You just gotta stay calm, that's all. There, I said it. Lanthimos doesn't simply want to trick us into illusory realism. He likes to remind us that we're watching actors acting, so as not to get in the way of his abstract ideas about societal control and emotional belonging. If his worlds were too realistic, his ideas would be far less palatable, lessening their impact. Not only do they speak unnaturally, but Lanthimos's characters move unconventionally too. Through his characters' often rigid and awkward ways of holding themselves, he's able to express themes of societal and group conformity, and the desire for individuality, simply in the way his characters exist in physical space and in the company of others. Have you ever danced with anybody? Yes. In doing so, he examines the benefits of group compliance versus the price of societal and personal liberation, all without his characters uttering a word. Lanthimos's characterization facilitates our entry into his philosophical ideas. His films are thought experiments brought to life, and through his characters' response to the absurdity in front of them, He's able to explore themes of conformity, individuality, alienation, and freedom. He's able to show that there are times when belonging may be more beneficial than escape, but that our conformity is often equally as absurd as that to which we are conforming. But because his characters so desperately want to fit in, they often mimic behaviour they think will get them what they want no matter how disturbing or unnatural. This is all by way of forcing us to examine the rules and societal norms at play in our own world. By observing characters who operate outside of convention, we're forced to wonder what arbitrary rules we accept just because society upholds them as the norm. If Lanthimos's characters behaved more like us, we may ironically, be less able to see ourselves reflected in them. And ultimately, we might never be prompted to consider how we, too, hide behind our own subtext and abide by the absurd rules that govern all our lives. <laughs>